WCBI News at 6 starts now. Good evening, everyone. Strong winds and, uh, and afternoon storms bring down a tree on a Columbus home. A brick fence was destroyed on Old Aberdeen Road this afternoon when the storm came through. It was blocking the owner's driveway, but no one was injured there. Several other trees also fell in the city while Lowndes County was under a severe thunderstorm warning. The nasty weather is also canceling tonight's sounds of summer at the Columbus River Walk. The big question is, are these storms gone for the day. For that answer, we turn to meteorologist Jacob Dickey for your first look at your forecast. Jacob. Joey, that first round of storms has pushed off to the south and to the east, but we have some more storms popping up on radar. One cell here north of Philadelphia near the community of Stalo. Ackerman also getting some thunder and lightning right now, seeing some more pop-up showers and storms along and south of US 82 here. Those are our main storms for the day. We've seen them popping up very quickly on our radar. Some of those storms that came through Columbus, here was meteorologist Alex Puckett caught this roof that came on here. Uh, if we can go to Viper 2, we can show you the roof that peeled off here. Once that storm peeled off, there, it came through, it peeled that roof back. Coming up, we will talk more about those storms that came through. We'll show some viewer pics and we'll take a look at some more thunderstorms for our Father's Day weekend. Thanks, Jacob. Charges are upgraded for the man accused of shooting two people outside a Tupelo Waffle House. 24 year old Nicholas Pack is now charged with murder after one of the shooting victims died. Pack is charged with murder and aggravated assault as well. His bond was originally set at $3 million. 30-year-old McKinney Smith died late last night. Investigators say he was shot four times and was the intended target. Police believe the second victim was an innocent bystander. The case will be presented to the next grand jury. A man in Prentice County will spend the next 35 years in jail on a sexual battery charge. Jurors returned a guilty verdict today for David Joe Glasgow. He was sentenced af this afternoon. Prosecutors say the five-year-old victim reported the crime, which allegedly occurred in August 2015, to a teacher. Glasgow recently escaped from the Prentice County Jail but was caught. He is facing other charges as well. Glasgow will also have to register as a sex offender. Earlier this year, Dr. K.B. Turner, the consultant hired by Columbus Police to examine the police department, held multiple neighborhood community meetings. In those meetings, Turner encouraged residents to volunteer their time to help officers. To date, those volunteers met for the first time. Five ladies came forward to lend a helping hand. Today, volunteers will help officers write reports and conduct background checks. Assistant Police Chief Fred Shelton says the volunteers will begin their training process in about a week. They'll also ride with and shadow officers. The volunteers tell WCBI they believe this could be a win-win situation for the city and the police department. I understand in order to realize what I believe and envision this city to be, which will be a great city, then I have to be a part of that process. And volunteering is one of the means or the way I can be a part of that process. We've had so many crimes and so much disruption with our children, with our teenagers. And I think it's important if we were, if they could see an example from the older people or the mature people getting out there, getting involved. Coming up tonight on WCBI News at 9 and 10, our Quentin Smith will have more from the volunteers and the impact this could have on the city. Community colleges across the state are raising tuition costs for the upcoming school year. East Mississippi Community College's 13% increase will raise tuition from 1200 to $1,500 a semester. The school chose not to raise costs last year, but had to make them this year to make up for state budget cuts. EMCC President Dr. Tom Hubner says even with the hike, the school will still have to make other sacrifices in order to not take away from students. Made the decision that we would not fill some positions that have been, that have been empty. Uh, because of retirement or attrition and in addition we've had to make a number of very difficult personnel decisions but at the end of the day we're, we're, we're doing so in the hopes that we can not diminish the, the student experience. To go to a school that puts you as a student first is really the best school that you could choose. Um, there's not many schools like that. 
Hubner says EMCC has a high number of students eligible for federal aid and state aid, and they offer a program that helps qualifying students with those costs not covered by financial aid. That program is the East Mississippi Community College Tuition Guarantee Program. Administrators tell us tuition spikes won't be taking away from students anytime soon. Our Jory Talley joins us live in the studio with more on this program. Jory. Joey, it helps students with tuition costs. If they live in EMCC's six county district, EMCC budgets and distributes the program's money to students, just like it does with institutional scholarships. When school costs spike, so does everything else. Whenever there has to be a tuition increase, it's going to affect that part of your budget where you pay for scholarships or anything that supplements the students' uh, tuition. EMCC Vice President for Administration, Dr. Paul Miller, says the school will still be using the program this upcoming year, but the community-provided program is losing some of its support. We have to work very hard to try to regain the external support that we had had for several years mm -hmm. uh, for that program uh, in order to uh, keep it viable. EMCC's tuition guarantee program gives students an opportunity to not have to pay for school out of their own wallets. The student will apply for all federal financial aid and institutional scholarships that they would qualify for. Then if there's any gap left in the tuition expense for that student, then tuition guarantee comes in and fills that so they have little to no out-of-pocket expense related to tuition. Student Janisha Cox says without financial help like this program, college wouldn't be an option. You're already struggling if you don't have that financial help to get that 1200 mm -hmm. So now you have to think, how am I going to get this? Do, is it really worth me going to college? Now you have more kids going to factory jobs. This student doesn't live in one of the six counties students must live in to qualify for the extra help and wishes he did with cost on the rise. I'll have to take out a bigger student loan. Uh, it'll affect my books. It'll affect all how I spend my money and everything in the fall. Miller, Miller says to make the tuition guarantee program stronger, they'll need to go back to market strategies and reach out to EMC supporters to get them reinvested in the program. EMCC's Journey East orientation for incoming students is tomorrow. Joey. All right, thanks, Jory. Main Street associations across the state are recognized in Jackson today. Main Street Columbus brought home honorable mention for its downtown window clean campaign. Main Street Tupelo received honors for a new business with the Thirsty Devil and uh, for community transformation with the Elvis Presley Birthplace Trail. Starbull's Night Market was named Outstanding Creative New Event. Main Street West Point received recognition for Outstanding Creative Fundraiser for the West Point Pickers. Kristen Stevens was named a Trailblazer Award recipient. When you, you live in a small town, you, I mean, you have the opportunity to say, I'm going to leave it, I'm going to do nothing, I'm going to complain, or you can make your world the best it can be. So those are your options. Victoria Bailey will have more on a special award for, a, for Columbus's own Mother Goose tonight at 9 and 10. A building that was once the center of entertainment is staging a comeback. We head to Louisville after the break. Welcome back, everyone. The Strand Theater in downtown Louisville was once a staple in the community. Now, with the help of the city, it will have the opportunity to become a strong presence once again. WCBI's Parker King joins us live in the studio to give us an update on the renovation project. Parker. Joey, I spoke with Louisville Mayor Will Hill, as well as other business owners in the downtown area, about this upcoming project, and they are all excited for the theater's potential. Built in the early 20th century, residents of Louisville know the Strand Theater. Well, the Strand Theater has been here as long as I can remember, ever since I was a little girl, going to, actually going to the movies every week for sure. It was once a hospital and a doctor's office, as well as a theater. But after being picked up in 97 by community members, renovations have been going on to make the building solely for the arts. We did the outside of the building, the facade, 
uh, the roof, all the things to make sure the building would stand. And so we've been um, over the years trying to raise enough money to do the complete restoration. In February, the Board of Aldermen and the Mayor chose to purchase the Strand, receiving a reimbursement from the Federal Emergency Management Agency. Mayor Will Hill says the city was able to do this because they went under budget with some disaster relief efforts after the 2014 tornado, and they had money left over to fund property acquisitions, including the Strand. We were very excited because the building is such a, a beautiful structure and is such a part of our heritage that we want to see it complete and we want to see it part of this community. I was excited that the building was going to be here. They were going to do something with the building. It wasn't just going to be an empty shell. And so then them using it for the arts for the community just makes it even more special. Structural issues have made the building a liability for the city, and until renovations are completed, the theater will be out of service. Still, people in Louisville are excited to welcome Strand Theater back into the downtown life of Louisville. It, uh, it's, it's for the community, it's for the people. So yes, I'm, I'm thankful that the city has stepped in and are in going to you know fix it where we can use it. It has to do with quality of life. You have concerts to go to, you have um, an opportunity to listen to speakers, you have an opportunity to study art, something you didn't have time for. Now, renovations are on hold until full funding is in place. However, preliminary designs have already been made. Hill says with the strands uh, under the city ownership, there will be more advantages to receiving funding faster. We've been watching some scattered showers and thunderstorms literally explode on our radar here, getting some good thunder and lightning in Ackerman as well as off to the west towards Vaden. After the break, we'll take a look at where these storms are forming, where they're heading, and we'll talk about the rest of this coming weekend. And we'll get some nicer weather in here. alert weather forecast with meteorologist Jacob Dickey. We're watching some more scattered showers and thunderstorms develop in our area. For the most part, in the Golden Triangle and in Tupelo, we are clear for now. Here's one particular cell just north of Philadelphia, getting some heavy rain there up towards Stalo, off to the northwest towards Alice. Some good thunder and lightning there, nothing severe right now. Seeing some more foam right over Ackerman, likely getting some good thunder and lightning there. Maybe some gusty winds with some of these storms as they continue to pop up this evening. Here are some of the storms earlier. Meteorologist Alex Puckett was in Columbus and caught this at the at the apartment complex in town here. The winds actually peeled the roof off, that tin roof off, and he got that really close video there. And uh, so that was some of the damage that we saw today. We also saw some really dark and scary clouds. This is from Jennifer as she was driving along Highway 82. It almost looks like a spaceship was rolling in, seeing the shelf cloud come through. Once that shelf cloud came through town in Starkville, Bib caught this picture. This is the underside of that shelf cloud. It almost looks like a wall coming in. Underneath, we like to call this the whale's mouth because of how it looks. Looks, looks very similar to that. Often has cooler temperatures and gusty winds followed by the rain. Our sky cam caught that really well. Notice how the shelf cloud rolls on through. Right afterwards, we got some of that rain here in town, along with some of the wind. We had some viewer pictures coming of seeing some of the damage that was out there. Over in New Hope, we had some pictures of some uh, trees that were down, as well as some power lines down. But we have calmed things down for now. We can tell where that rain came through on our temperatures here. We're seeing the low 70s in Amory, Columbus, West Point, and Starkville. This is where the clouds 
clouds have came through off to the south and to the west, though, still seeing some of those 80s on there where we've kept the rain at bay so far. As we go through the night, though, I think we'll end up in the low 70s, perhaps upper 60s. We'll clear out after midnight, still be a warm and muggy night, and we'll keep those chance for those scattered showers and storms through the evening. Now, on our day Friday, we'll watch for more pop up showers and thunderstorms across the area. I think the coverage and intensity will be less than it is today, but we'll still get some rumbles of thunder and some torrential rain with that, along with some frequent lightning at times. But again, by the time Friday night rolls around late, if you're heading to the movies, things will clear out. We'll get those temperatures into the upper 80s and low 90s. It will be steamy out there, seeing 90 degrees for our high tomorrow in Amory and in Columbus, 89 in Winona, Calhoun City. We will reach 90 as well. Again, won't be all storms all day long, but we'll keep the chance for those scattered showers and thunderstorms through the day. We'll get those chance again on Saturday and on Sunday as a weak cold front approaches us, and that's going to give us then the storms rolling in. I think the best chance will be on Monday, but we'll keep the 90s all the way through the seven day here. A couple upper 80s in there, but still will be hot and steamy. We do get a little bit of a break as we head to the middle part of next week. All right, thanks, Jacob. Coming up, we recap the 2017 Major League Baseball draft and have the latest on Brent Rooker's contract negotiations. Next in sports. WCBI Sports with Robbie Donahoe is brought to you by your local Ford dealers. Go further. No surprise, Brent Rooker was the first name heard from the Magnolia State's collegiate baseball players from this year's MLB draft. The bigger surprise may have been the team that took him, though. He took him in the 38th round last year. The Twins wanted him in the first round this year, and they're moving fast on his contract. According to Twins beat writer Mike Berardino, Minnesota has agreed to terms pending a physical with Brent Rooker. He's expected to receive slightly more than the slot figure of $1.935 million as the 35th overall pick in this week's draft, according to Berardino. In that report, it stated that Rooker could possibly play first base, according to the scouting director at Minnesota. Sean Johnson. So let's see how that all plays out. So that Major League Baseball draft for Mississippi State, other players that were drafted, Ryan Gridley, Jake Mangum, and Jordan Anderson, those top two guys, Gridley's undecided, Mangum is returning, Anderson is a signee who was a top 150 uh, prospect, so that's a big time get for MSU to get him to campus. Cody Brown was undrafted, signed by the Yankees. Ole Miss also had a couple draftees, David Parkinson, Tate Blackman, Colby Bortles. Top two guys could come back to school, they're undecided, so is Brady Feigl, so is Kyle Watson. Colby Bortles, though, is a senior, so he is expected to sign with the Tigers. To our local guys, how about Hulk, a native and ICC's Tyreek Reed, the super slugger, was selected in the eighth round by the Texas Rangers. Now, Reed is signed with Mississippi State, remains undecided on if he will sign his contract with Texas or go to school in Starkville. The 6'2, 260 pound first baseman right fielder had 71 hits with 15 home runs during his final season at ICC. And another local kid picked in the MLB draft this week. Itawamba AHS grad and EMCC star VJ Miller, the two sports star, selected by the San Diego Padres in the 14th round during his freshman season in Scuba. Miller amounted a 5 0 record with a 397 ERA, 54 strikeouts, over 47 and two thirds innings pitched. Switching gears now to high school football, and a former area coach is coming home. Longtime Alabama high school head coach. Ken Adams will be the new head football coach at Hatley. He replaces Zane Thomas, who joined Houston this offseason. Now, Adams has spent 24 seasons coaching in Alabama, most notably at Lamar County, where he guided the Bulldogs to some of their best seasons from 2007 to 2014. Now, Adams is a Fulton native, and he brings that single-wing offense to northeast Mississippi. And yes, we have actual football to show you. Seven on seven action at Webb Sportsplex in South Tello. Stories of the day, we start with New Hope. Trojans went undefeated on the day. Kyrie Fields looked good at quarterback, hitting Jeremy Tate for the score right there. Houston won their divisional group. Here's Uriah Shepard to Allen Robertson. Made that one look easy. And then lastly, uh, West Point's the Green Wave are going to be darn good this year, kids. And they may throw a host, whole host of guys at quarterback. Here's Jake Chambliss, probably going to be the guy that's more your prototypical passer. And Jason Brownlee just goes up and gets it. That's a jump ball catch easy. Uh, not picturing these highlights, Marcus Murphy, but he did make a couple plays as well. Again, high school football tour starts next week on Monday. So get buckled up and get ready to go for that. And one final note for you want to mention, uh, Columbus native and Starkville Academy graduate Maggie Prophet has signed a Contract. I almost said scholarship. She's yeah. now in the pro, pro ring. She signed a pro scholarship with Binder Bassus Grunberg in Germany. Yeah. Good times. Get some Wiener Schnitzel in Germany. Can you say that again? Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, uh, Venus Nation? No. <laughs> the name of the team. Oh. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> Bender Baskets Greenberg. <laughs> Scattered showers and thunderstorms tonight. I think the best chance is along and south of US 82. More is Friday, Saturday, Sunday, but perhaps the best chance before we calm things down is going to be coming in next Monday. Okay, all right. Well, you know, uh, the rain does cool things down. It, and it does, but if you have that Father's Day uh, grilling outside, maybe you have to duck inside for a little bit, but it cool it out afterwards for sure. All right, thanks a lot, Jacob. Thank you for joining us, everybody. Have a great night.